identification of two cations or two anions from the given mixture of salts. Qualitative analysis is a process of identifying a chemical substance. In inorganic qualitative analysis, the process involves finding a basic radical, that is a cation and an acidic radical, that is an anion present in an inorganic compound. In standard 12 qualitative analysis involves identification of two basic radicals, that is two cations or two acidic radicals, that is two anions from the mixture of inorganic compounds. Aim to identify two cations from the given mixture of salts. The apparatus required are small test tubes with test tube stand, a wooden clip, a small beaker, a glass rod, a watch glass, a platinum wire, a blowpipe, a tripod stand, wire gauze, a matchbox, a plastic spoon, a pair of tongs, a evaporating dish and a centrifuge machine. The steps involved in the analysis are as follows. 1. Preliminary test. 2. Dry test. 3. First, we shall perform the preliminary test. Test 1. Observe the color of the mixture. If the color of the mixture is white, the mixture may contain lead, cadmium, aluminium, calcium, barium, magnesium, bismuth, troncium and potassium or ammonium radicals. If the color of the mixture is green, the mixture may contain nickel or copper radicals. If the color of the mixture is blue, the mixture may contain copper. Test 2. Let us find out the nature of the mixture. Take a pinch of the mixture. Add about 1 to 2 cm cube of water. If the mixture dissolves in water, the mixture is crystalline in nature. If the mixture does not dissolve in water, the mixture is amorphous in nature. Now we shall perform the dry test. Test 1. Heating in a dry test tube. Take a small quantity of the given mixture in a dry test tube and heat it. If a white layer is formed on the upper cooler part of the test tube, it indicates that ammonium radical may be present. This white layer is called the white sublimate. If there is a white residue, the mixture may contain calcium, aluminium, barium, stronium or magnesium as one of the radicals. If there is a colored residue, the mixture may contain nickel, iron or copper radicals. Test 2. Charcoal cavity test. Make a shallow cavity on the surface of the charcoal. Take a pinch of the mixture. Add to it a pinch of solid sodium carbonate and a drop of water. Mix it properly. Fill this mixture in the charcoal cavity. Hold this charcoal piece with a pair of tongs. Using a blowpipe, direct the reducing flame on the charcoal cavity to heat the mixture in the cavity. 
if a white incrustation is obtained around the periphery of the charcoal cavity. It indicates the presence of ammonium radical. If there is a white residue, the mixture may contain calcium, aluminium, barium, troncium or magnesium as one of the radicals. If there is a colored residue, the mixture may contain nickel, iron or copper radicals. If red scales are obtained, the mixture may contain copper radical. Test 3. Flame test. First, we shall clean the platinum wire. Dip the platinum wire in concentrated hydrochloric acid. Then, heat the wire in a slow oxidizing flame. Now, take a pinch of the given mixture. Add a few drops of concentrated hydrochloric acid to moisten the mixture. Dip the clean platinum wire in it and hold it in the outer part of the oxidizing flame. If an apple green color is imparted to the flame, the mixture may contain barium radical. If there is a bluish white color to the flame, the mixture may contain lead or bismuth radical. If there is a pinkish violet color to the flame, the mixture may contain potassium radical. If there is a bluish green color to the flame, the mixture may contain copper radical. If there is a crimson red color to the flame, the mixture may contain troncium radical. Test 4. Borax bead test. This test is performed if the mixture is colored. Make a small loop at the end of a clean platinum wire. Heat it and dip it in borax powder so that some powder sticks to the loop. Heat it again till a transparent bead is obtained. Now touch the bead to a small crystal of the mixture. Heat it again in an oxidizing flame. Stop heating and observe the color of the bead. If it appears reddish brown, the mixture may contain nickel radical. If it appears bluish green, the mixture may contain copper radical. Test 5. Test for ammonium radical. Take a pinch of the mixture on a piece of filter paper. Add a few drops of dilute sodium hydroxide solution on it. Fold the paper and smell it gently. If there is a characteristic smell of ammonia gas, ammonium radical is present. Probable radicals. The probable radicals of the mixture are listed from the positive inferences of the dry test. Now, we shall prepare the original solution of the mixture to perform the wet test. Take a pinch of the mixture in a small beaker. Add about one and half test tube of water to it. A crystalline mixture dissolves completely to form a clear transparent solution. Called the original solution. An amorphous mixture does not dissolve completely. Boil. Centrifuge it.
the upper clear solution is the original solution basic radicals are classified into six groups depending upon their reactions with specific reagents group 6 can be tested independently group 6 has two radicals ammonium and potassium analysis of group 6 test for ammonium take 3 to 4 drops of the original solution in a clean test tube add 5 to 6 drops of dilute sodium hydroxide solution and heat the test tube hold a moist turmeric paper near the mouth of the test tube if the paper turns red ammonium radical is present confirmatory test for ammonium radical take 3 to 4 drops of the original solution add excess of nestler's reagent a brown precipitate confirms the presence of ammonium radical test for potassium take 3 to 4 drops of the original solution add 5 to 6 drops of the sodium cobalt nitrite solution if there is a yellow precipitate this shows the presence of potassium radical confirmatory test for potassium radical take 3 uh -huh. to 4 drops of the original solution add 5 to 6 drops of picric acid in benzene a yellow precipitate confirms the presence of potassium radical a mixture cannot contain two radicals from the same group if we have confirmed ammonium or potassium radical from group 6 we have to identify the second radical from group 1 to group 5 detection of groups from group 1 to group 5 for crystalline mixtures we use the original solution for group detection for amorphous mixtures prepare the original mixtures as follows take a pinch of the mixture in a small beaker add about 1 and 1/2 test tube of dilute hydrochloric acid to it there is a clear transparent solution this is the original solution each horizontal column indicates the test to be performed the vertical column just below it indicates the color of the precipitate obtained and the particular group containing certain basic radicals follow the test in the given serial order till you get the precipitate for the particular group analyze the precipitate further to detect and confirm the particular radical in the detected group to detect group 1 take about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution add few drops of dilute hydrochloric acid if there is a white precipitate formed group 1 is present centrifuge the solution analysis of group 1 to the white precipitate add about half a test tube of water and boil for a minute centrifuge this solution 
there is a white precipitate settled at the bottom and a clear transparent liquid above the precipitate called the centrifugate confirmatory test for lead take 2 to 3 drops of the centrifugate and add 2 to 3 drops of potassium iodide solution a yellow colored precipitate confirms presence of lead to detect group 2 take about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution add few drops of dilute hydrochloric acid using kipps apparatus pass hydrogen sulfide gas through the solution if there is a white precipitate formed bismuth may be present if there is a black precipitate formed copper may be present if there is a yellow precipitate formed cadmium may be present centrifuge the solution analysis of group 2 to the group 2 precipitate add a few drops of dilute nitric acid boil it the precipitate dissolves completely add concentrated ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline if there is a white precipitate bismuth may be present if there is a blue solution copper may be present if there is a colorless solution cadmium may be present confirmatory test for bismuth dissolve the white precipitate in dilute hydrochloric acid to two drops of the above solution add excess of water a white precipitate confirms bismuth radical confirmatory test for copper to the above solution add 2 to 3 drops of dilute acetic acid and 2 to 3 drops of potassium ferrocyanide a reddish brown precipitate confirms copper radical confirmatory test for cadmium to two drops of the above solution add water and using kipps apparatus pass hydrogen sulfide gas through the solution a yellow precipitate confirms cadmium radical to detect group 3a take about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution add a pinch of solid ammonium chloride add concentrated ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline A white gelatinous precipitate indicates presence of aluminium while a reddish brown precipitate indicates presence of ferric radicals group 3a is present centrifuge the solution analysis of group 3a test for aluminium radical to the white 
gelatinous precipitate add half test tube of dilute hydrochloric acid and warm it gently to dissolve it confirmatory test for aluminium to the above solution add a few drops of dilute sodium hydroxide solution there is a white gelatinous precipitate formed add excess of sodium hydroxide the precipitate dissolves completely this confirms aluminium radical test for ferric radical to the reddish brown precipitate add half test tube of dilute hydrochloric acid and warm it gently to dissolve it confirmatory test for ferric radical add 2 to 3 drops of ammonium thiocyanate solution to the original solution a blood red color obtained confirms ferric radicals to detect group 3b take about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution add a pinch of solid ammonium chloride add concentrated ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline warm the solution using kipps apparatus pass hydrogen sulfide gas through the solution if there is a black colored precipitate formed group 3b is present centrifuge the solution analysis of group 3b to the black precipitate add about 3 to 4 drops of concentrated hydrochloric acid and 6 to 7 drops of concentrated nitric acid this acid mixture is called aqua regia warm the solution the black precipitate dissolves completely forming a clear transparent solution confirmatory test for nickel to the above solution add ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline add a few drops of dimethyl glyoxim reagent a pinkish red colored precipitate confirms the presence of nickel to detect group 4 take about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution add a pinch of solid ammonium chloride add concentrated ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline add a little excess of saturated ammonium carbonate solution if there is a white precipitate group 4 is present centrifuge the solution analysis of group 4 add half a test tube of dilute acetic acid to the white precipitate and warm gently to dissolve it using this solution we shall perform test for barium tronchium and calcium test for barium take 2 to 3 drops of the above solution add 2 to 3 drops of potassium chromate solution if there is a yellow precipitate this confirms the presence of barium radical test for strontium take 2 to 3 drops of the solution add 
two to three drops of a saturated solution of ammonium sulfate. If there is a white precipitate, this confirms the presence of strontium. Test for calcium. Take two to three drops of the above solution. Add ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline. Then add a few drops of ammonium oxalate. If there is a white precipitate, calcium radical is confirmed. To detect group 5, add about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution. Add a pinch of solid ammonium chloride. Add concentrated ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline. Test the solution with red litmus paper. The paper turns blue. Add a little excess of disodium hydrogen phosphate solution and warm. If there is a white precipitate, group 5 is present. Centrifuge the solution. Analysis of group 5. To the white precipitate, add 5 to 6 drops of dilute hydrochloric acid and warm it gently to dissolve it. Use this solution to carry out tests for magnesium. Take 2 to 3 drops of the above solution. Add 2 to 3 drops of dilute sodium hydroxide solution. A white precipitate shows the presence of magnesium radical. Confirmatory test for magnesium. Take 2 to 3 drops of the above solution. Add 2 to 3 drops of titan yellow and Two to three drops of four normal sodium hydroxide till the solution is alkaline. A red precipitate confirms the presence of magnesium radical. Qualitative analysis identification of two anions from the given mixture of salts. Qualitative analysis is a process of identifying a chemical substance. In inorganic qualitative analysis, the process involves finding a basic radical, that is a cation, and an acidic radical, that is an anion present in an inorganic compound. In standard 12, Qualitative analysis involves identification of two basic radicals, that is, two cations, or two acidic radicals, that is, two anions, from the mixture of inorganic compounds. Aim to identify two anions from the given mixture of salts. The apparatus required are small test tubes with test tube stand, a wooden clip, a bent tube, a small funnel, a small beaker, a small conical flask, a tripod stand, wire gauze, a matchbox and a plastic spoon. Let us first start with a preliminary test. Test of solubility. Take a small quantity of the mixture and add a small amount of water. Shake properly. The mixture dissolves in water. This shows that 
water soluble carbonate chloride bromide iodide nitrate sulfate may be present let us now start with a dry test test 1 take a small amount of the mixture add a few drops of dilute hydrochloric acid if there is a colorless gas evolving with brisk effervescence allow it to react with lime water for some time lime water turns milky this shows that carbonate radical may be present test 2 Take a small amount of the mixture. Add a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, heat the test tube. If there is a brown colored gas evolved, Hold the starch paper near the mouth of the test tube and heat it again. There is no effect on the starch paper. Nitrate radical may be present. If the starch paper turns yellow, bromide radical may be present. If there is a violet colored gas evolved and the starch paper turns violet, iodide radical may be present test 3 take a small amount of the mixture add a pinch of manganese dioxide and a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid heat the test tube if there is a brown colored gas evolved hold a starch paper near the mouth of the test tube and heat it again there is no effect on the starch paper nitrate radical may be present If the starch paper turns yellow, bromide radical may be present. If there is a violet colored gas evolved and the starch paper turns violet, iodide radical may be present. If there is a colorless gas evolved, keep a wet red litmus paper near the mouth of the test tube and heat it gently. The litmus paper becomes whitish. that is there is bleaching of the litmus paper chloride radical may be present test 4 take a small amount of the mixture add a few pieces of copper filings and a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid heat the test tube If there is a brown gas evolved and the solution in the test tube turns green nitrate radical may be present in the mixture probable radicals the probable radicals of the mixture are listed from the positive inferences of the dry test prepare the original solution take a small amount of the mixture in a small beaker add about 1 and 1/2 test tube of water to it the compound dissolves completely to form a clear transparent solution this is called the original solution now we shall perform wet test using this original solution test for sulfate 
take a few drops of the original solution. Add 4 to 5 drops of dilute nitric acid to it. And then a few drops of barium nitrate solution. There is a white precipitate. This shows that sulfate radical is present in the mixture. The confirmatory test for sulfate. Take a few drops of the original solution. Add few drops of dilute acetic acid to it. And then a few drops of lead acetate solution. A white precipitate confirms that sulfate radical is present. Test for halides. Take a few drops of the original solution. Add 4 to 5 drops of dilute nitric acid to it. Then add a few drops of silver nitrate. There is a thick, curdy, white precipitate formed. This indicates that the mixture may contain any one of the halides, that is, chloride, bromide, or iodide. Now take a part of this precipitate and add two drops of concentrated ammonium hydroxide. Shake well. If the precipitate dissolves completely, chloride radical may be present. If the precipitate is not soluble, bromide or iodide radical may be present. Confirmatory test for halides. Take a few drops of the original solution. Add a few drops of dilute sulfuric acid and 2-3 to three drops of chloroform. Then add about half a test tube of chlorine water. Shake the test tube well and observe the lower layer, that is the chloroform layer. If the layer appears colorless, this confirms the presence of chloride radical. If the layer appears violet in color, this confirms the presence of iodide radical. If the layer appears brown in color, this confirms the presence of bromide radical. Test for nitrate. Take a few drops of the original solution. Add a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid carefully. Cool the test tube under tap water. Add two drops of ferrous sulfate solution along the side of the test tube slowly. There is a brown ring formed at the junction of two layers. This indicates the presence of nitrate radical. Confirmatory test for nitrate radical. Take a few drops of the original solution. Add 2-3 to three drops of diphenylamine reagent. There is an intense blue coloration. This confirms the presence of Test for carbonate. Take a few drops of original solution. Add a few drops of dilute hydrochloric acid to it. We see brisk effervescence of carbon dioxide gas. 
This indicates the presence of carbonate radical. Confirmatory test for carbonate. Take a few drops of the original solution. Add a few drops of phenolphthalein indicator to it. The solution has turned pink in color. This confirms carbonate radical. 